Next topic is procession, which is uh, going to correct a lie I just told you. So we've talked about daily motion, spin on the axis. We've talked about annual motion, our motion around the sun, the revolution. And the lie I told you is that here we have the spin axis, and I said it's always pointed in the same direction. Here we're spinning, we're going around the sun, it stays in the same direction, stays in the same direction, year after year. And that's approximately true, but it's not absolutely true. Over long periods of time, as this is going on, it's going around and around the sun, the axis of rotation will persist. It will slowly turn. It's a 26,000 year cycle. So after 13,000 years, when it was summer in the northern hemisphere, it will now be winter in the northern hemisphere. In terms of where this season occurs in our orbit around the sun. Before it was occurring at this place, summer. Now winter will be occurring here and summer will be occurring there. We call this precession and it's related to tops. And so you've all played with tops before. Have you, have you spun a top before? I don't know if you've noticed this. And my, my experience with tops comes from um, being half Jewish and playing with dreidels and Hanukkah, <laughs> gambling for pennies. That's actually kind of the extent of my religious education, gambling for pennies. But uh, anyway, so you take the top and you spin it. And so it's rotating really fast on its axis. But, you know, if you did straight up and down, you won't notice this, but if you set it down at a tilt, you notice that as it's spinning really quick on its axis, it processes, the rotation axis changes, maybe over a couple seconds. And I'll show you, I'll show you in just a second. Um, this happens if you have, and you can work through the physics of it, if you have a, a body that's not perfectly spherical, if it's perfectly spherical, it won't do this, but if it's not perfectly spherical, and there are forces tugging on it, it will not... Uh, just stay in the same direction. So if this is in space, far away from any massive body, there are no forces, you spin it, it'll just keep spinning, the rotation axis will stay the same forever and ever. But if there's a force tugging on it, the rotation axis will change as long as it's not spherical. And so a top is a great example of that. That's clearly not a sphere, there's more mass distributed in some places than other places. So as you spin it quickly, it will process slowly compared to the speed of its rotation. Yeah, I'll demo this right now. I brought a top. I brought a fancy top. So let's see if I can break this. Now, I... Oop, I just broke it. Okay. So this is a top. I can speed it up with this gizmo here. You'll all see it from the top of the top. I don't know if that will be useful or not, but that's how the, the dot cam works. I also have a little movie of it from the side that I'll bring up in just a second. Okay, this is what I used to... Spin it up. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to put it on the stand. Hopefully I won't drop it. Okay. So, I mean, it's a top view. Maybe that's not the best view. But it's spinning. Super, super fast. The gold in the middle is spinning super, super fast. And then this is precession. And you can see we got quite a degree of tip going on here. This is like a hundred dollar thing. I don't know why they let me take it and use it. This is going to end badly in just a second. Okay, there we go. I'll show you a movie of it from the side. But and the idea is this is not a perfectly spherical distribution. It looks like a sphere from this axis, but here it's clearly not a sphere. The mass is kind of in this uh, disk-like structure here. And so this was spinning very fast there, and then it's processing on top of it. Let's see, I got the movie. This movie of the exact same model. For some reason, movies take a, a while to load on my laptop. It'll come up though. One of these days. It's not me. Okay. So again, the gold thing is spinning so fast you can't even see it, but it's processing as it goes. 
And it's just because it's not a spherical distribution in a force, the force of gravity is pulling you in one direction. So that's precession with the top. The question is, does the Earth system qualify? And at first you may say, no, Earth is a sphere. And for something to precess, it has to be aspherical. Earth, it turns out, isn't perfectly spherical. It's very, very close to spherical, but it's not perfectly spherical. It's because it's rotating very quickly. Any object that's a little bit flexible, if you spin it really quickly, it becomes oblate. I've never really developed a good demo for this, but I'll just draw the basic idea here. You start with the spherical distribution, and if it's spinning, it becomes a little bit oblate, which means a little thick around the middle here. The mass distribution of Earth changes because of the spin. You can kind of get the idea, if you're in a car and you go around a curve very quickly, you're kind of thrown to the outside, or if you're racing around a track, you feel that force pushing you to the outside. That's what's going on around the belly of the Earth. The Earth is spinning, it wants to fly out. And so the mass distribution changes a little bit. Not this much. It's a very, very small amount. You can't see it with the naked eye. It's stronger with the gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn. In the case of Saturn, you get 10% oblation. It's 10% bigger across the middle than from top to bottom. Uh, but that's because it's a big ball of gas, and gas is a little bit more flexible than the Earth, which is rock and metal. <clears throat> but uh, you can measure it. The Earth is bigger if you measure it this way instead of this way, pole to pole. So it's not a sphere. It's very close, but it's not, and so it can process. Since it's close to being a sphere, it can't process very quickly. You can have very slow procession. Now the other thing you need is an uh, external force acting on it. In the case of the Earth, you have two external forces in the plane of the solar system, pretty much. You have the moon tugging on it, and farther away you have the sun tugging on it as well. So we have these forces, slightly different direction, not down, because there's no giant force of gravity like on the top we saw previously, but in the same plane as it, and so you do get very, very slow procession. It rotates on its axis once a day. It processes once every 26,000 years. Very slow motion compared to the rotation, 26,000 years. So what does that mean? Well, we got the globe here, and you know, over one year it goes around the sun, the tilt doesn't change that much, but over time it will. And let's see, the procession's in the opposite direction. So all the motions we've been talking about are counterclockwise. Procession is clockwise, so it's going to process like this. The tilt's going to move like this. After 13,000 years, at this configuration in the orbit, it will now be winter instead of summer. So we start with summer, and we go around, come back summer, go around, come back summer. But over the years, we're going to process just a little bit, and so summer's going to come just a little bit earlier. And the next time we come around, it processes a little bit more. Summer's going to be a little bit earlier. And it's a small amount. You don't notice it year to year. It's 20 minutes every year. The seasons start 20 minutes earlier than you would expect um, from its position in the orbit. And so it's not like our calendar flips. Our calendar takes this into account. Check the time. Got a few minutes. Our calendar takes this into account. So summer will always start on June 21st. But in terms of the position on the orbit, the seasons do come a little bit early. So after 13,000 years, what was summer over here is now winter over here. And then what was winter is summer, another 13,000 years from now. The pole star changes, which makes sense. The pole star, Polaris, is the star that just happens to be in the direction of the rotation axis of the Earth. If I change the rotation axis of the Earth, I'm changing the star or whatever star might be directly above. So this circle here corresponds to where the rotation axis points at different times. Right now, we're kind of here, close to Polaris. As the rotation axis changes, we go forward in time, and Polaris won't be the pole star. It'll be moving farther and farther away. Eventually, we come around. I'm not sure what star that is, but that will be pretty close. All these. This would be the pole star for a while, and then this one, and this one. None of them are exactly there. You come over here about maybe 12,000 years from now, Vega, or about 14,000 years ago, Vega is one of the bright stars in the sky. It's not super close, but it's so bright your eye will be drawn to it as a pole star. And you keep going forward in time, or backwards, I guess they have to 
cycle the numbers at some point, but here's 5,000 B.C. To me, about 3,000 B.C., you have Thuvian, which is directly on the rotation axis of the Earth at that point in time. It's not the brightest star in the world, but back then we didn't have light pollution. It would be easier to see, maybe about as easy as it is to see Polaris nowadays. So that was a true pole star, a north star. And after 26,000 years, you're back to where you started. Now, I used to have a really nice top. I stole it from the physicists, and uh, I was keeping it in my office, and then someone borrowed it back, or maybe I felt bad and gave it back. They either lost it or they hid it from me. I haven't figured out which yet. But they gave me this really crappy top, and this compensation here. So my other one was electric. You know, I, I could just add a little motor, and, zzz, and it was spinning real fast. This thing, I got to wind up with a piece of string, and it's, it's a pain to do. Be patient, I'll get it. I did pre-wind it for the other section, but then I used it, and I didn't have time to set it up again. Getting it here. Oops. It'll be worth it, trust me. Actually, it probably won't, but... Okay, so that's probably enough for me to get it spinning. Here's the base. I'm going to set it on this thing. So, just so you see it before I spin it, we have this uh, part in the middle here that spins. And I've wound the string around. I'm going to yank the string really quick to get it spinning fast. And I'm going to set it up on this. And you have a, not the best view. You have a top view of the top. You'd be better to see it from the side, but you know it's too small and the classroom's too big. But after this is done, I'll show you a movie of my really nice top that they're hiding from me. <laughs> I know they are. Okay, so you know I have this lab with all these students. We build telescopes all over the earth, and they don't let me touch any of them. So I always break everything I touch, and that's probably gonna be the case here. But let's see how it goes. Okay, it's spinning fast. And I gotta somehow get it on here. I think it's gonna fall over, but there we go. Whoa! Damn it. it it's going, though. It's, it's going. It's not sitting on the base, but you see it processing there? It's spinning really fast. It's processing slower than it's spinning. And now it's kind of straight up and down. Let me see if there's still any juice in it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably not worth me winding it up again. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's try it. This is fun. <laughs> I'm going to try it one more time. Damn, those physicists taking the top I stole from them. Okay, we're going now. Yeah, this is going faster. Okay, and I feel the thing wanting to process in my hand. Get on there, damn it. Whoa, whoa! A little bit less procession. Fuck it. <laughs> I should have done that in the class, I wasn't in videotape. <laughs> <laughs>